Cheers. All right, welcome back uh, to Sea Story Cup 4. Now, uh, we've got something quite interesting coming up. You know, we've got the match between uh, Frodan and yeah. Dice. So we're going to oppose uh, the very, you know, he's a caster, so obviously he's giving everybody a lot of crap when yeah. they play. Uh, now it's his turn to be yeah. uh, receiving the heat. So with me is Orange, of course, and uh, Martin Creek joining yeah. us for the cast. Have you casted this before? Uh, not in the mainstream, right. no, but in the B stream quite a lot, yeah. Ah, so yeah cool. First time on mainstream. Yeah, cool. there's, a, there's a B stream for this in case you guys want to check it out. There's, a, you know, we have a lot of groups. There's been, uh, you know, 32 players. We have, you know, groups of four, so there's eight groups. And uh, we can't broadcast them all on the main channel, so we've got a B stream if you guys want to check it out as well. Uh, you can catch the other matches there. So that being said, before we move forward, a little uh, cult action for the raffle. Again, Take TV is hosting a raffle. You can check them out on facebook.com slash Take TV. Uh, you have a chance to get yourself some chairs uh, from uh, Magnanomic, I think, right now. Um, and you've got, uh, you can, like, these are the chairs that you can get. You know, Need for Seats kind of gives those away. Magnanomic chairs, uh, you know, one in EU, one in US. And there's a bunch of Hearthstone bags that you can get. Uh, pretty cool. And two hoodies to keep yourself warm. Uh, at night when you feel lonely in your living room in the winter yeah. and uh, all you have to do is enter here putting uh, your name your country your email address pretty simple so just check them out obviously you have to go here on their facebook page and uh, hit the seed story cup for raffle and uh, yeah don't don't type exclamation mark raffle in chat it, it won't go anywhere um i'm sorry that being yeah. said we're pretty much ready to go yeah some exciting hostile action this is one of the matches i've been looking forward to like as soon as Froden got announced for the tournament when Reno didn't show up. <laughs> right, uh, I dodged that bullet, but yeah. I was supposed to replace Caldi, and as a result of that, I made like really cool decks. Oh. I, like, I, I, I want to emphasize cool uh, because they're not good, but they're cool. Well, that's what matters, right? Right. I know that to last Seed Story Cup, Frodan brought like clockwork giants to the. See, the, that's, oh, the yeah, way, so. that's the way to do it. Right? Yeah. Entertainment value, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, that, it doesn't have to be good. Then also, when he loses against a European champion, he can blame that. It's just I mean, it's the easy way out. It's like, <laughs> you're never responsible for the best stuff. That, this is the reason I play bad decks. It's like, I can just dodge the responsibility of my loss. I can just yeah. say, oh yeah, it, was, it wasn't meant to win. Um, and I yeah, do that quite exactly. often. Exactly. Yeah, but like, honestly, uh, about this match, I'm really excited. Like, Froden has like high level commentary, which means that he's like, he's way better than like the average uh, legend player. So I'm really excited to see what he yeah. can do here against Thais. He does get uh, perfect information when he casts. Though, like Martin, do you know the lineups that he might the, the lineup that he might have brought? I, I have absolutely no idea. No, no? neither do I. Really no, neither of you know anything about Froden's preferences. No, no. it's like well, not it, his it, game preferences, of course. I imagine. No, I mean you never see him play. So, mm. but I'm I'm guessing it's pretty strong. Like I think he knows what he's doing, right? He has to at least play a little bit of the decks that he comments on. Um, yeah, that's. True. I mean, at the very least, he's talking with Temple Storm about yeah. strategy. Mm, so. Yeah. He certainly got help from, like, there are Temple Storm members in this tournament, like Aaron and Eloise, yeah. and Kaldi, too. So, like, he certainly got help from them to help, help prepare a lineup. Yeah. Well, I have inside info about Frodan. He's actually oh, magic did. aiming. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. That's how it is? Oh, I, yeah. I always suspected that, but just didn't want to call him out on it. Glad to do that. You just look at him, you're like, yeah, that's, that's actually plausible, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. A pretty great hair. <laughs> like pretty great yeah, hair. Yeah, absolutely. Glorious. All right, so uh, I have to assume Tice is just going to be running BlizzCon, kind of a BlizzCon-like yep. uh, lineup, just because yep. the amount of time he's had to prepare is probably not that much. Yeah, we were talking about this downstairs, and Tice is actually not feeling all that comfortable in this match because okay. he has barely prepared it all for Sea Story because BlizzCon has been his main priority, and uh, he still feels a little bit down about losing in the semifinals of BlizzCon, yep. and is like trying to recover from that. So. It, well, if I understood Tice correctly, he doesn't have very high expectations on this tournament from his, like, from him. Uh, yeah. But, well, you have to keep one thing in mind as well, is that um, the, it was a semi-finals. Granted, I think a lot of people thought that it was probably one of the best matches in the entirety yeah, sure, of the Road yeah. to BlizzCon oh, was absolutely. broadcasted. Uh, so for the most part, I think that match was still excellent, yeah. even though he ended up losing it. Like, it was very uh, strategic. You could tell yeah. that the de decision-making, there was a lot of it, which isn't always the case. Um, when you play decks that are a bit more straightforward, like, you know, Secret Valley. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Oskaka, I was talking to him after the semifinals, and he was just describing that series as the, as like the best series of Houston he has ever played in his life. Yeah, I, so. I totally, uh, I can, I concur, right? Yeah. So, I don't know, if he's playing the same lineup, he's definitely got a good chance, because the decks were good. It's just a matter maybe of uh, getting them lined up against something that it's going to be good against. Uh, this is last year's standing, BlizzCon is Conquest, so we're talking about a very different approach. Yeah, it's a bit different, right? Right, because yeah. last year's standing, you have to have uh, a lot of synergistic... Uh, your decks have to synergize with one another as far as the lineups go. 
Whereas yeah. Conquest, you can just target something. Very yeah, and a lot of like countering and stuff as well in uh, less you're standing. So right, exactly. like tech cards, for instance. And not to mention that we have a ban here too. Yeah. That's not something they had available in the World Championships, but now they get to ban one of the decks from their opponent. Right. I mean, the, the, the ban the ban system uh, Blizzard might implement in the future at some point, assuming you know people get used enough to the idea of a ban. Because I think for for the most part, they're afraid of uh, confusing new players. Yeah. Of course, oh, yeah. right? Like, it's always difficult when you're addressing the Twitch audience to make yourself clear, because there are you know a few thousands of people there watching, and not everybody kind of gets things at the same rate, right? Like I'm not saying Twitch chat is slow, um, but you know it happens. That you have to run with the you know lowest com common denominator. Yeah, uh, as a as a new player, you definitely want it to just be as simple as right, possible. Right, right, obviously. To just like tune into the tournament and understand what's going on, and a ban makes that you know, even though not all that complicated, it's like it gets harder to follow. It's an added layer. Yeah, Plus, you have to as a caster, you have to explain as well a little, yeah, little yeah, bit of true, the, yeah. the reasoning. Um, behind that, and casters don't like to explain, so <laughs> that it kind of sucks, right? It's like an additional layer of work. Yeah, yeah. Can be I, I agree. Yeah. But we also saw something that's interesting. We're talking about how different this is, but we also actually saw Uskaka just earlier today bring like basically his uh, BlizzCon lineup plus one more deck, right? And just win out yeah. in his group. But went 2 0 and it's interesting. finished first place. Yeah, it's interesting the way uh, it, it worked out. But I think his conquest lineup might have been good enough, like overall. Yeah. Um, but he said he was really, he really thought he lost against Elki. We were talking about that after the, the, the match. I don't know if you saw it. Oh, he yeah. did a reverse sweep, right? Yeah. Right, like yeah. exactly. It was, he, he got 2 0 by Secret Paladin, or yeah, by Secret Paladin from Elki. Yeah. And then, as he was about to maybe run into a lot of trouble with, uh, I guess, Secret Paladin, he pulled out the patron, patron won. Oh. But then there were two more decks to beat with Patron, and he still pulled it off. The last win was very close. Um, there was like a crazy play by Elki. Like he he made the single most. Uh, I mean, I I want to say difficult play with the Void Caller going face. It was a really like a decision that oh. most people probably wouldn't have made on yeah. that spot. So I, it, like he has got a lot of respect for Elki after that match. So even though he yeah. won, yeah, Elki has been playing really tight. Yeah. I have yeah, not yeah, uh, been. A I have not seen him uh, play all that much. I saw him at BlazeCon, but other than that, I have not seen Elke play. And yeah. from what I've seen so far this tournament, I, I, I'm really impressed. Yeah. So that being said, uh, the players are getting ready, if not ready at the moment. You got Frodan here just browsing uh, probably his social media at this point. He does that all the time. <laughs> um, so yeah. Apparently, he has to rectify decks. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I thought he was getting, like, just doing some Twitter things yeah, there, posting you know, a tweet yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about to play the European <laughs> champion. Oh, Frodan. Not casting for once. And Tice is like, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm not sure why I'm staring at this camera. <laughs> Resident looks, sleeper uh, over there, yeah. Yeah, he's getting uh, pretty bored. He didn't seem too stressed, but he was waking up in the, I think he was in the bathroom, just like shoveling water in his face. He's like, I gotta wake up. Oh, wow. I, I just feel like, I feel asleep right now, so. Yeah, I, I don't know. Was he one of the? There were some people staying here really, really late last night, but I don't think Tice was one of them. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, th I think he left for the hotel relatively early. Compared yeah. To some other people. But. Yeah, I don't remember him being here when I left, and my last match finished at like 3 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, I know Frodo was casting very late. Like I hadn't slept oh, yeah. in like a hundred hours, um, barely. And I had like five hours of sleep over four days. Yep. And I was here literally brain dead. Like yesterday, I think on the stream, I didn't read the chat much, but I'm pretty sure Noxious was high. <laughs> if I read the chat, I was probably like super high, which was... Uh, it, it's what BlizzCon does to you. Like we oh, both man. were at BlizzCon and just Crazy. flew directly in here. and it's No, man, odd. I was at ESL. I casted two oh, wow. days of ESL oh, really? oh, in between. God. I don't even know how I, like, how I made it. And anyway. I, thought, I thought that only being at BlizzCon like, had no. me really, really tired. Oh no, man, oh. I, was, I was literally brain dead. But it's fine. It, you can't tell the difference half the time, so it's probably yeah. fine. Uh, card pack! Oh, oh. And is Frodo <laughs> opening packs so really? we can play on the European what? server? Okay, All right. Oh, okay. So basically what we're witnessing here is a, a pure pay-to-win player <laughs> at work. Um, and this, guys, is the reason why you can play for free on Hearthstone. You can check them out at Hearthstone.com. Start an account today and the whales will pay their way to make Blizzard a profit while you can just freeload and get one card pack a day at the very most. Thank you for watching Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> and Frodo just knows he's going to win way more money from winning this tournament than from... So he can definitely afford these packs. Yeah, you know? of course, of course, yeah, obviously, yeah. right? It's what is first place? Like 12,000, 10,000? I don't know, but definitely more than what these packs cost him. And yeah, Froden is very confident. Uh, of course, yeah. I mean, he's very happy about the fact that he can. I mean, he's probably half happy to play. Like he doesn't, he didn't want to. But yeah. I think deep down inside, he wants to just somehow win. 
against dice. They'd be like, yeah. yo, look at me. I, I'm a caster, but I'm also good at I don't know. As, as much fun he does of himself, like, right. he's just like, yeah, I'm going to get wrecked and stuff. Yeah. That's basically how he goes around the place, like, saying how he's just playing for fun. But I still think, like, somewhere deep within, he wants to prove himself that, like, yeah. I, I'm also a pretty decent player. Yeah, I think he can surprise us, actually. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure of that, right? Like, I don't know yeah. if you've seen him play before, but um, like, he, he's really got a good grasp of every single matchup overall. Yeah. Like, he will defer to the pro player when it, like, when they're co he's co-casting. Yes. Uh, for the most part, he can definitely just explain everything. Um, like, Rain when you, when you co-cast with Reynad, it's interesting because Reynad's got, uh, you know, more knowledge as far as maybe the, the specifics of a yeah. matchup. But the broad picture is, like, he, he's, he's, he's got it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I for myself, is one that is pretty new to like this casting stuff yeah. has just learned how much you actually learn from just watching matches and commentating them yeah. and Froden has done that more than anyone else in the scene so probably I know I know uh, Admirable watch probably more Hearthstone than anyone I can even think of he watches a lot uh, yeah um, I know that but like I, we haven't seen him cast uh, as much necessarily these days but he watches a lot of it all right Froden seems ready uh, he's rubbing his shoulders cracking the neck cracking the knuckles yeah, rubbing his eyes, putting the glasses on, moving his chair. I don't know. I, I'm excited. I I love ties, but I really, really want to see Froden perform here and upset. You know, I mean, it would be nice to see an upset. The I, thing is, yeah. like, I'm not I'm not sure what his lineup is and how confident he feels after knowing what everyone else is playing. Right. Yeah, we have not seen too many upsets so far this tournament, right? Um, no, not really. I mean, there there hasn't been. Like, there really isn't that many underdogs, right? It's not yeah. like you have a, like a roster of underdogs that you're like, yeah, th if this person beats uh, that person, then it would be it would have been crazy. F fair enough. I guess that's what happens in that tournament with 32 invites. Right. Like it's invite only, so you yeah. pretty much know uh, most, yeah. if not all, the names, the, the people that are here. Yeah. So it should be pretty nice. Now I want to know. Uh, I want to see if Tyus can pull this off. I know you know he was a bit bummed out because after Archon Team League win, um, and then he did pretty well at Star Ladder, I think. Uh, he moved, yeah, he finished second. Right, he finished second at Star Ladder, which was really good. And then he had a chance at BlizzCon, of course, to make it past. Um, and, and he really wanted to get that streak of wins, like back to back to back. Like he really wanted to go first in ATLC, first in Star Ladder, first yeah. in BlizzCon, but I, that's unrealistic. I like how he has like, almost better results than anyone else <laughs> right now. He's <laughs> like, oh, I'm not good enough. I know. Damn it. Oh man, he's such a bro. Like Everybody yeah. from G2 is just, they're such a cool family. Yeah, they, yeah, are. they really are. Yeah. I very I'd close. Like, yeah, they they have such a great like team Chemistry. feeling, just practicing together and stuff like that. And that's you know one of the big reasons why they won the Arkan Team League. Yeah, I mean it, it's obviously it was a team endeavor. So like of course when people work well together, you're gonna notice a big difference um, in the way their performance pans out. Mm -hmm. yeah, kind of normal. Yeah, Martin, what do you think of this match? What do you think is gonna happen? Like, I think. Thais will like have the uh, upper hand, but then Froden is gonna like come pushing back and show him what it, show Thais what he's got. All right, so and two zero like for Thais, then two two after Froden oh, comes that back. that would be amazing. And then there's the upset. Uh, like Thais still takes it, but for a minute it looks like Froden could take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Making Thais nervous. That's the that would be the he best. looks nervous. Froden is looking pretty nervous right oh, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he, he looks like he's uh, on the verge of dying. He's actually squirming in his chair. He's like, on the verge of dying. I'm, go I'm going up against one of the best players in the world right now. Um, but I mean, he's, he knows Thais inside out. Like he, the thing is, even if you know somebody's tendencies in this game, it doesn't matter because there is a correct play. And these good players, these pro players, tend to usually find it uh, more often than not. It's going to be the Paladin versus Druid. So uh, Frodan's on Paladin, and uh, Thais is playing his iconic Druid list, but now it looks like he's playing an aggressive list. Yeah, uh, that, this is not something we've seen a lot from Thais. And I don't think I've ever seen him play the aggressive Druid, actually. But it's... A, it's a, it's been performing really well in this tournament so far, and I'm not surprised to see him bring it. I know that Firebat has a lot of respect for the deck, someone that I've been practicing with, and a lot of other players that I've just talked to has been super happy about uh, Aggro Druid in this meta. Yeah, like, what is it good against? What is it, like, worse I mean, against? I mean, like, really strong control decks can always take care of a aggro lineup, of course, or an aggro uh, deck, but... I don't know, he's playing against Paladin and it's probably Secret Paladin and we know what, how that can go, but I don't know how it's been performing versus Secret Paladin. I, I, I think it's favored against uh, Secret Paladin. There's this uh, European player called Indoran that I know have mm -hmm. played this deck a, a lot, like pr probably more than him and so, uh, someone called Curse that I, know, that I don't know personally have played this deck like very, 
very, very, for a very long time and kept a lot of uh, stats on it. And I think Indran's best matchup was actually uh, Secret Paladin with like over 200 record oh, games sure. or I mean, uh, you can trigger, tr like the Noble Sacrifice is yeah. easy to trigger. Yeah. Um, and just because of that, you're getting like a pretty big edge. Uh, right now though, Frodan's got a crazy curve. Uh, it's not something you see every time. But the Aspirant... Um, is a really big deal in this case, just because when you coin it out against even a zombie chow, there is still no way for them to uh, to deal with it. So Frodan's looking a bit, uh, a bit nervous. Yeah, Tice has a pretty good turn here as well. He does have the living roots and the uh, druid of the saber. So, but I don't know what is he thinking about. Maybe clearing a minion. I mean, living roots could be used, uh, you know, to complement your. Aspirant, if you want. Yeah, keep it alive. Right? You could you kill know? the uh, exactly. minibots. Um, so it's just a little clunky in that way. Like, you can deal with the 2-2. Two -two, zombie child then go comes back, but your 1-1s one can take care of it. Or you're on turn 4. Uh, if somehow the Aspirant doesn't die. I mean, good luck with that, but if somehow... This, this yeah. way, if... Uh, Monster for battle will punish yeah. him. Though. Yeah, it would, yeah. I'm uh, surprised by that play from Tice. Well, then again, if it doesn't have the Monster for battle on turn 3, they you get to lead up with your four drops, which is like really, really good. So I guess that's just like a line of play that you hope that your opponent does not have master because your hand doesn't do a whole lot against it. It's not like you have a swipe or anything to deal with it. So you just kind of have to hope that. Uh, I mean, if it's there, you're in the worst. Like it doesn't matter which spot you're in, right? Like you're still going to be. I mean, if you had one ones from the living roots, though, um, I feel like muster would be a little bit easier to handle. That's um, true. Yeah. So I'm curious to know what Tyson's reasoning was because th there has to be one, right? He's played yeah. Druid way too much for his own good. Uh, so there's, he's obviously got like a good reason for that. I think he's the player that might have played the most Druid in tournament play. Like I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that. Well, he's played it pretty much everywhere. Yeah, I'm willing to believe that he uh, is considered just a Druid master by most yeah. of, most of the pros, uh, <laughs> like players, well known to stream it a lot too. Oh man, the knife juggler doesn't feel good here. It's got to feel awful. Oh, it's actually it's gonna yeah. that, that, that makes uh, that makes a little bit more. Is a bit of an easier turn, uh, just because you you keep the zombie child unless the druid takes action, uh, pretty drastic action in fact to do so. Um, and if you play keeper of the grove here, it's pretty mild, so you wouldn't care, right? The zombie child just doesn't matter too much. Yeah, I think a shredder here is pretty strong. It's a sticky minion, and it's. Turn four. Yeah. And the, the Aldor also works very well against it, which yeah, means it that Frodan made a good play. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, like he played around the possibility of uh, Shredder. He's like, yeah, I can remove it somewhat easily. And then my zombie child could use Kings on, so I pop the Shredder, use Kings, and go to town. Look here, Tice chooses to... Oh, wow! Yeah. The plays! I think a lot of people would have used like the two damage through the zombie child, but this is so much better. Oh yeah, by a long shot. Um, it does draw the Doctor Six. Yeah, and also, Furnish has some interesting decisions here. He can choose to go for the Blessing on Kings. That's like the kind of safer play. It's bad if your opponent has BG Age, because then he can gain the initiative. But the other option was basically to knife on hero power, and the, he doesn't clear the Keeper to grow yeah. if he doesn't like land a 50-50 on the a knife angle on the keeper, so I, I like the play of just uh, de deploying Blessing of Kings there for I think, I, I think it was really solid, just because there's really nothing else that is going to get you any advantage. Um, if you just use the Aldor the way that it was, you really don't gain much out of it, because you don't kill the 2-4. Yeah, and he already used the Silence, so he shouldn't really be afraid of another. Oof, that's pretty rough. So, with the uh, Combatant, he could kill a minion. Yeah. But there's always the fear that you don't really get, uh, like, that is, this is redemption, let's say, or revenge. Like, without a follow-up to it, like, locking up your entire mana pool is not, like, it doesn't feel very appealing. You can test for secrets with this one one. It's oh. the knife dagger. Well, okay, you're still fine, right? Because you yeah. can trade into it and hopefully find something you need. Could you justify Druid of the Saber with Savage Roar? Or are you too afraid of the possibility of Doctor Six coming up, like on 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 curve? Your opponent just has two cards, so I, I think it's justifiable. I don't know it's the correct line though, but it's definitely like a solid option. It seems like it doesn't go for it though. He just goes for to take the clean trade on the on the knife with the shredder, and uh, if he goes in uh, stealth, he's in for a concentration problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. oh, this is what we call an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. no contest. 
one of the few situations where you get playing Dr. Six on turn six is not correct, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, mean, yeah. I, I feel like killing three minions is... That's a good excuse enough to not play him. Swipe or bust? Yeah. Force I mean, of nature, I guess, could also work. But yeah, but like, even if he draws one of those, it's still just like a uh, Dr. Six follow-up. Uh, yeah. You're dead anyway. This is looking really good for Frodan. Yeah, it's definitely in his favor. Now, Frodan's got this, and the thing is, it's last zero standing, so he can still replay the deck. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we saw earlier Elki do super well against Oskaka with Secret Valley. Uh, and you know that the re what Elki said, he actually was very realistic about it. He said, I think in this tournament, I'm facing off against too many players in my group that are better than me. Uh, and if I try to, you know, beat them in a Control Warrior Mirror or Freeze Mage Mirror or, you know, a deck where yeah. the key is decision making, then I think they would have the edge. He thinks they would have, like, maybe at least a small edge. And he said, instead I brought decks that are easier to pilot and they're going to take them off guard, and I'm going to ask them more questions yeah. uh, oh, yeah. than they can answer, perhaps. So maybe Frodan's line of thinking was similar. That, yeah. um, although that's kind of funny to think about. I mean, he does have the Hunter, so I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. It gets to where, like, I know a lot of people that would be way too proud to like admit that to themselves, that, hey, I'm not as good as other people in this tournament. So I think that's like a really cool way to go about it. And, I wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, that's how Frodo and Melky went right. about it. He, he sighed in relief there. He's just yeah. trying, like going, "Oh yeah, I took a game. All right, the game one is in." Um, and if we learned one thing from last year's standing, like a long time ago, is that usually the player who gets the first one has a really big edge. Um, I think maybe with the diversity of decks that we see nowadays, that format might have evolved a lot. Because it used to be that you had like three decks, or maybe like one best deck and a few counter decks to follow it up, and it was yeah. predictable, right? Um, so right now, last year was standing coming back in a deck, like in a metagame that's so diverse, means people actually bring all sorts of things. Yeah. It's really a very different game. Well, I was just about to say, what do you think we will see from DICE? Like, it is uh, Paladin or Mage, but... Freeze Mage, Freeze Mage Yeah, Freeze. very strong versus Paladin. Freeze Mage is like... Paladin is like one of the reasons why Freeze Mage is so popular in this tournament, just because this is known to be like very very favored so, for the yeah. freeze mage like secret paladin makes you play freeze mage and freeze mage makes you play warrior so everybody's bringing something <laughs> yeah, along yeah. those lines like the lineups are kind of uh, um, i don't say predictable but you see a little bit more of the the same just because secret paladin is a risk it's a really yeah. big risk yeah but it's also at the same time as it's a big risk it's also like one of the decks with like the highest free win potential there are just so many powerful cards in the deck it's playing like the Playing the most powerful minions on every step of the curve, which is like, it's very hard to pass up on a deck that does something like that. Yeah, I mean, this is last row standing, so technically you don't have to play it, but the threat of it is enough to warp people's lineups. So that just goes to show that even if you're a great player, just that the knowledge that this deck could come up um, yep. is enough to make you tweak your, uh, your approach. But one thing to say, though, is that the head from Frodan is again pretty solid, although you know it's a bad matchup. Granted, yeah, uh, it's still a very good hand. Yeah, th this is what you want, right? You have like some sticky minions. You ha just have a curve, which is but when has got very underrated. <laughs> <laughs> very underrated against Freeze Mage. Although one of the the combination of cards is like so good in this matchup. The Secret Paladin doesn't have. Barely any answers to is the Doomsday Frost Nova, and uh, we saw Tice pick up the second piece on that combo here. Yeah, he's got the ability on turn five to wipe the board, and in this deck, turn six may not be a clear. You know, we we're talking about uh, Mistress Challenger, but you're at least going to be able to stall until you can get the bigger board sweeps. Yep. Um, but you're going to have to wait as long as you can to use that Frost Nova Doomsayer, because usually when it hits, it's a guaranteed board wipe. Yeah, that's true, and there's nothing really a Secret Paladin can do against it, right? They don't normally run Silence or any Even way equality to deal. anymore, right? Yeah. 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 What would be a card that uh, you just don't think about that would deal with it? Is there even one? I mean, there is... I only think, like, Owl. It's, okay. like, the only card that you can, like, think of. A any other? A cute way is Repentance, and then you have a Knife Juggler as a follow-up. Okay, yeah. But you have to have very good timing with that to deal with it. Yeah. And even then, um, the, like you'd have to run two copies to guarantee that. Like, yeah, you'd exactly. Be, uh, able I to mean, deal with it. I mean, you'd be able to tech it at least, just the, for what it is. The, the, there, there's just like no way to really consistently beat Doomsayers with Secret Paladin. Sure. Beating Kodo. Oh God. Yeah, oh. That, that, that's Praise the Alchemist. Hey, we're already <laughs> tech cards. Oh, <laughs> we're already playing Alder Peacekeeper. Might as well fit in a Kodo there, right? Yeah, I mean, Alder Peacekeeper with Crazed Alchemist could be. 
Like, there's got to be something funny to do with this. Yeah, we're going really deep here. I like it. Yeah. So I mean, you can turn, like, you take Ragnaros, right? Which is still dangerous. You just Aldor, then you Crazed Alf, then you kill him. <laughs> like, for all it <laughs> matters. Absolutely. It, it's totally viable. Oh, man. Oh, oh, hitting that's the a curve. Great Get Throw down. This is nasty. This should be illegal. So good, too, because it leaves a uh, two drop even after the Doomsayer goes off, so you can, like, keep up the aggression. And the Avenge will trigger as well on that. Uh, oh, that's true. On the two drop afterwards. Yep. Now we only need to top deck a Doctor Six next turn that we can coin out. I'm okay, actually not next turn, but you know, the turn after that. Or Doctor Seven. Yeah. One of the Doctors. We'll see what comes up though. Lothap would have been good if, yeah. the, if the Doomsayer hadn't fallen. That was an auto win. Yeah. Like I don't say auto win necessarily like a guaranteed victory, but the odds of you winning after this it, are pretty high. Yeah, huge it, tempo. At yeah. least, yeah. And push just for a lot of damage. Yeah. Now the question is, do you redeem to get the knife juggler back? Because that is what you're getting back. You're not getting the shredder, you're not getting the mini bot, you're getting the juggler. Is that worth it? Oh, with the spider, mm. actually it's very worth yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think it is. And he hits face with the first juggle. Alright, ah. second one. He does have a blister though next turn, so that could come back and punish him. Yeah, but... Uh, oh wait, Will. Oh, the, the Avenge is triggering on the Knife Juggler too, which means that he can't ping it down. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, this is useless. Scarab. <laughs> Magnificent. Ah, th this is... I'm sorry, but Froden is pretty much cheating. We're not allowed to use the new cards until top 16. Yeah, you're not... You were absolutely... Uh, what if you found a way to bring it back to his hand and then played it? Is he disqualified by default? Hashtag reported. Oh man. Fro cheat. Come on. <laughs> wow, crazy mm. play. Okay, I guess the sludge here is not too bad, right? Yeah, I, I don't guess think, I don't think I want to develop the low fib. Would already. you go sludge yeah. and then just coin hero power to get one extra damage? Because what are you gonna do with that coin? You can already play boom. Yeah. Is there ever a play like a top deck that makes you wish you didn't use your coin? Tyrion? Ah, Perhaps. good point. Good yeah. point. Ty Tyrion is like the one card though. Also, he can like low fib and coin a free drop of some sort, like a muster battle. Right? If he keeps yeah. it, right. but I still just want to, like I don't see how it gets much better than just making a one one there, so I would kinda like to see that, but I don't blame him for not doing it. Whoa! Oh, that's we're really talking good, about yeah. tech card. I, I suspect we're about to see Lothab coin Aldor. And the interesting thing about that, and it's really cool, is that all those spells are simply not gonna be played because of Lothab. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was flat out wrong. I was saying they're not going to be played because of Lothab filling up the hand of the mage, perhaps even like you know further, um, which means you're almost guaranteed to get a great, like an even better divine favor. But he wants to keep the Lothab for the crucial turns when he's going to land the lethal. Yeah, I kind of like that though. I mean, if you have a really stable board, if you're afraid of AOE, drop Lothab and you're fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Another Doomslayer. That can't be good. Yeah, this is... Even though Froden drew the Divine Favorite was huge here, I still think that Tice is looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah he has the Alex next turn, and he has a lot of burst in hand, so yeah. I think he will just go for it next turn. What do you think? Yeah, he's, he's like not really in a position where he's afraid of dying. He's still at 27. We'll go down to like 21 next turn. It's yeah. very hard for Paladin I to muster that much damage in one turn, so... I think you can use Alex your opponent and, you know, then start burning him. You just need one more burn spell to be yeah. able to finish Froden off in one turn. There's really no way. Like Paladin is kind of the class where, in order to lose against it as Freeze Mage, you have to you know, be blind, like missing an arm, uh, maybe have like Ebola. Like you really have to have a crazy problem not to beat it because it's a deck that's like it's a class that seems to be predicated upon tempoing the board down, and all you do is control the board. Like there's no shenanigan with combos coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, they're yeah. letting you answer the threats, and they're all usually manageable on some level. Oh, see, more tech cards that are actually, like, pretty good against Freeze Mage. Maybe not in this spot, but if that, if Tice gets forced to play, like, a Freeze and a Doomsayer, Doomsayer. like, that, that Iron Beak out will be very valuable. You see, like, this is a bad matchup, but Froden has, like, some cards that can really swing it, like, Iron Beak Owl and Divine Favor. Yeah, that's a very big card as well, you know, being able to protect your Sludge Belcher. Like, it's not a big deal uh, immediately, but the fact that it lives means that you're getting more damage over the long game. And you have to, like, it doesn't die to Flame Strike. It doesn't die to immediate, like, AoEs. And with the Iron Beak Owl, you're feeling kind of safe. 
Now the question is, do you use? Uh, I was gonna say, do you play a minion? Um, Shredder or Kings? Yeah, Kings opens you up to uh, something like a fireball ping, but that's one fireball away from your face. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I like the pilot Shredder this turn. You just use uh, Blessing of Kings as first a little bit later when you don't have great minions to play. Also, just next turn low foot plus Blessing of Kings is a pretty good line. Yeah, it's actually going to put a lot more pressure. Just because if he has Flame Strike here, I mean, sure, you know, he's able to kill the. With, with the additional ping, he can kill the Belcher. Um, but you'll have whatever comes out of the Shredder is still alive, right? Yeah. Oh, man, here we go. Yeah. So, Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance. Is enough damage for uh, Thais to feel like he's just going all in. He's got a good chance of top decking more damage. Yeah. True Silver Champion from Frodan would be a really big deal, like as soon yeah. as possible. Any heal after Alex is usually just huge because. Yeah. It, the free swing is playing on like, like very thin margins, and uh, just any random heal can really disrupt their plan. Yeah, I mean, Lothab alone is going to lock. Like, it, Frodan might suspect, probably suspects that uh, Tyus wants to go in with a crazy spell blast, like coming up next turn. Yeah. But he's got the ability to lock it down for at least one turn with Lothab. Um, and now the question is, uh, if you do that, you have to kill the Doomsayer, so you're spending seven damage on the minion. Yeah. Uh, you get to keep the Owl. Or you can go, you know, Owl with Lothab and Knife Juggler, let's say, if you want to go yeah. really crazy. Is it possible for him to set up Lethal now for next turn? I mean, if he plays the Lothab, he's going to block, uh, like, one entire turn where Tyson yeah, but you have be to able kill, to play You have to kill the block. Doomsayer, right? That's the really big deal. You do have the Silence, though. So you would go Lothab, like, Juggler, Lothab, Iron Beak? I don't know how much damage yeah, I, mean, I, I think I like that line. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's up lethal for next turn. With the kings, and, right? Yeah, and there's no way for Freeze Mage to like, efficiently get through uh, Sludge Belcher. Right. They have to literally fireball it. Um, yeah. There's no way they can play Blizzard. Flame Strike's out of the question. If, even if they... Like, so what you're afraid of is taking like 8 face damage from the Alex draws up, but there's no way that he can get uh, those damages in with uh, the Alex if he's under low fit. And there's no Ice Block. Just want to point that out, right? Yeah. The mage hasn't been able to get. Like, there was one ice barrier early in the game. If it's you know if it's found from the top uh, somehow, then Tyus can stick around. That looks like game. But he can find it actually. So, so scientists scientist scientist. can pull out. Uh, so you frostbolt your own scientist, I guess. I mean, it looks like it's his only choice now, right? Yeah, it doesn't look like there's much else that he can do. That puts him in a horrible position because that frostbolt is like very relevant for just killing Frodo. Yeah, yeah, but if you find the the first ice block and then somehow you pull like a flame strike out of nowhere, followed by an yeah. ice block like off the top, crazy things could happen. Yeah, it's it's this line of winning, but it's not a very good one. Frodo I mean, uh, might have been stressed out, but it's looking pretty good. Yeah. I think uh, Tyus was hoping for that juggle to hit the mad scientist so he could ping it instead yeah. and save the frostbolt. Yeah, that would be huge for him. So he had to sacrifice the the heal bot in order to do that, right? No, he attacked with Alex into Sludge. So yeah, but he could have... Okay, yeah, I see. And wanted the juggle to hit the Mad Scientist. What is that secret? Is Stai smiling or is Stai going to escape concede? He's calculating, that means his eyes barrier. <laughs> yeah, it so. probably is. So it's 20 damage, we're not blessing our king. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. blessing our king. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well... Stai, I mean, Frontier has to check, right? He's gonna do yeah. the math. 8 plus my board is that 20. Like, if there's Ice Barrier? I, I haven't counted, but I'm very sure it is. I'm not a mathematician, but... <laughs> looks like... Uh, <laughs> this looks like oh, Weeple. did we get it? And... It oh. is Ice Barrier, so wow. Throne is gonna win... 2-0. Yeah, with... In like... This this matchup is so unfavorable for Frodon. Oh, did we, did we see the BM? Oh, oh my wow. god. Oh Frodon, you savage, man. You want to make friends or enemies? <laughs> yeah. It's too late, I think. He's uh, doing the victory dance there. Yeah. He's like, I play Secret <laughs> Valley, dude. Whatever happens. Don't, don't wow. blame me. Blame, don't blame the pilot. Blame the deck. <laughs> right? And Tyus is looking slightly worried. Yeah. He's like, after this hot run, I'm going to lose to a caster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and and Froden, he looks really excited about being in this position. Like yeah. after winning first game, he was like super happy. So it's really shining through that he cares a lot about this I mean, match. Yeah, I mean he's getting the better results that Temple Storm got in a while. So it's gotta feel pretty good. It's gotta feel pretty good. Fair <laughs> enough. Froden's laughing over there, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna last very long. Oh, Secret Paladin versus Secret Paladin. All right. So this can go either way. Yeah, we see double knife juggler from Froden in one of the matchups where 
knife finger is actually like at its best because there's no really efficient answer for Paladin to deal with a knife finger on turn two or even turn one with the coin. Tice is playing Argon Squire. That's not really something you see in Secret Paladins. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think Tice might be running. You know, the older versions of Secret yeah. Valley were very aggressive, and they all had Argon yeah. Squire in them with Secret yeah. Keepers as a given. It wasn't like you could play mid range. That came a lot later. Yeah, the, those decks also like tend to play like double divine favor and stuff right. like that. We'll see though whether or not. Uh, I mean, I, the divine favor is still a card that's a little bit difficult to use. Um, even if you're playing an aggressive Valley deck. Yeah. But we saw Frodan play it last game, and it really just refilled the hand. Yeah. And it helped, because he won because of that yeah, those, in the long game. Those tech cards from Frodan was really making a difference last game. Yeah. The Divine Fear, like, refilled in his hand when he was out of, almost out of cards. And the Iron Beak out, like, if that Doomsday would have went through, he, he would not have won the game, so. It's better than a Crazed Alchemist, is all I'm going to say. This is pretty good for Frodan. He can yeah. play Juggler and just attack him with the Creeper into the uh, Juggle. And if he gets good Juggles, he wins. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm maybe not win right away, but it's looking really good for him if he hits the one of these uh, juggles on the knife juggler. Oh. All right, muster for battle. for yeah. Tice would absolutely decimate this board. If that's not the case, but if you if you know if you play the juggler and you kill a one one, you can trade your juggler and protect uh, your own. Right, it won't die yeah. immediately unless there's muster. So there is still a chance that Tice is able to salvage this, but all he needs to do is dodge. If he's playing, of course, the juggler, he has to dodge the juggler and the face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 my oh, this is really good, yeah. up for Frodo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing textbook ladder game. This is a textbook ladder game. <laughs> um, number one, it's like it consists of 100% Secret Valley, so yep. it's already got that going for it, which makes it very realistic. And then one player hits the juggles and the other doesn't. Top deck must for battle on turn three. The only thing missing is like the top deck mysterious channel on turn six. Sadly, but it's already there. Yeah, I mean, they will just draw the other one on turn six and play it right, right. from the top, just to you know. I mean, he has a curve anyway. He goes like Shredder into King's Avenge or Shredder into top deck Belcher into a Challenger into you know Doctor Boom. This is a matter of time. Every single time. Yeah. Tice will get to play his mysterious uh, challenger first. Though. Oh, this is triggering so my PTSD. Might... I don't think I can watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Having to getting to play the mysterious challenger first, just as you said, is like a huge deal in yeah. this matchup. You see the shredder come down. Probably is gonna be met by a shredder from Frodan too, uh, and. I don't know, you could trade to play around Consecration a little bit, but then again, your Shredder is pretty good against that already, so... Yeah, I mean, if he trades his own Shredder into it, like, if you don't pop it, um, like, you're forcing him to have Consecration, right? Yeah. Like, 100%, there's no way he can get away with playing it slowly. And he didn't play it on this turn, like, he played that Shredder really quickly, so... He probably doesn't have it. And it was a good Consecration turn, for sure. It was good enough. Like the, the fact that you're happy to consecrate one ones that could be acquired through hero power says a lot about the threat levels of the following turns. Um, so definitely, we'll see whether or not he gets it though. I need something good here. He needs a consec. That's not something good. But that's a minion, <laughs> and you can always spawn an unstable ghoul from that shredder, right? Things yeah. could happen. Okay, yeah. That's what needs to happen. But Ty certainly needs some good RNG on his side to come back in this area. It like to come back in this game. Doomsayer has to be a. Oh, that would be. That would so be I, I get it. He pops the shredders, right? He gets Nerubian egg, <laughs> and Frodan gets Doomsayer, and then that's kind of uh, it's kind of like a crazy whiplash. But esports at its best, right? It has to happen. You can even get like Avenge out of it and buff the egg if needed. Uh, I mean the uh, the, the yeah. Nerubian egg. Oh, the yeah, Nerubian yeah. egg comes out of it. All right, no shenanigans from Tice. Wants to play tight secret paladin game, and uh, he's still gonna get the first six drop, and he's gonna get Doctor Boobs. That's still a very big advantage. Absolutely. Let's see. Siege is gonna be triggered. We'll see what this event pops up. It's actually a pretty big deal because if it hits the pilot trigger, he can actually just ignore it. But uh oh, hitting that silver hand recruit, I think he has to trade. Yeah, we'll see if disaster occurs or. Everything's gonna go according to plan. Don't get explosive sheep, is what Frodan is thinking right now. That's pretty That's good with Blessing of Kings, I heard. <laughs> yeah. I heard that you can get a lot of health out of that. 
Oh it's just, it's just messing with King's uh, recruit. I agree with that. Push for the damage. You have Challenger coming sure. up next turn. Yeah. You're putting a lot of pressure on Tyus here. Yeah. Turn five, you get a five-five, uh, and then you just put down the single most insane minion. Yeah. Known to men and women. You wouldn't want to be discriminatory here. I think that. Uh, oh, a full oh. Christmas tree. Get down! Haha, I live! <laughs> <laughs> Dream nightmares about those sounds. Repentance. <laughs> it's gonna happen, but how relevant is it? it's gonna be? The Mysterious Challenger is still protected by Noble Sack and stuff. I think what you do as Froden here is to just uh, pop the Noble Sacrifice with the Light Justice, then. Uh, then kill the the redemption defender with the one one recruit, and then just go face for nine. Yeah, well, because you're forcing like Tyus has to make trades anyway. So do you really care um, at this point? For justice. Right, you do have your own secrets, so he still has to defuse those himself, and he doesn't have a life justice. Huh? He's gonna have to do that with his big minions. He's wasting them effectively. Like consecration is still a big deal. Um, if you're able to get yourself, you know, Consecration just to finish off the 6-1 right there, that would be amazing for Tyus. Yeah. Alright, Competitive Spirit, there it is. And now we need to see what Tyus is top decking, because that will determine the game. It definitely will. Just playing a Dr. Boom here and he's dead. Yeah. And... Suspense. Is it the escape concede? It is! Ouch. Oh, goodness. Well, no, wait. Wow. Is there a no, there's, yeah, there's a Shredder Hail Mary you could pull off, right? Yeah. Attack with the 7-7. Seven, seven, okay, that's and true. Then yeah. It's so not over. One more shot. A one more shot at it. A, a very, very slim chance that this goes uh, Ty's way, but... He has to get... What does, uh, what does he, he have get? to get? I don't even... Like an Annoyotron, or...? Is that even enough? Because uh, no, Avenge, I, I, well, I no, it's, it's not. not no. Be enough, no, no, it's it not. would be enough if and only if the Avenge goes on the recruit and the spider, because it's going to be at seven attack, which means that uh, it doesn't kill you if the other two. Oh my God, an Oyotron. You'd still be safe, right, with an Oyotron? Yeah, yeah. Because there's nothing else. Oh. <laughs> it's a one-two. Wow, and Broden is gonna take the serious 3 0. Secret Paladin style. Yeah, I, I just want to, like, honest here, Twitch chat. How many of you call that? Oh, my God. Made sure that that was not something that people expected at home, but huge congrats to Broden going into the winner's bracket of his group, knocking out none, none less but the European champion, Thais. <laughs> he's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, wait, I think Thais just threw him an insult, and he's like, what? what? <laughs> All right, Fro Frodo's going to be coming uh, on the casting bench for an interview, but I, I think he can interview himself, right? Yeah, it, it's my time to interview Frodo. Go ahead, uh, dude. Go ahead. What is this? Hello, welcome, Frodo. That was very impressive. Frio. Should we stop asking you questions? Blizzard, I hope you're watching. <laughs> you can that, go ahead with I, I, I actually don't know what to say about that. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to say that... Uh, I have nothing but respect for Tice. I, I, cons I regularly consider him one of the best players in the world. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't think if we played that series 10 times through, I would have won more than maybe two or three. So uh, yeah. I think I got insanely lucky that series. Wow. But you, you played uh, really well, though, I, I, have, I have to say. Yeah. Like, there were a lot of close calls from the side. Like the, the Freeze Mage game was actually yeah. well. Like the, the whole Loth keeping Lothab until you had... I mean, the Iron Bikel was clutch, granted, but it was still the sequencing of that turn was probably the single most impactful one you had. Yeah, I think, um, oh, first, I, I'd like to make a shout out to uh, Just Saiyan from Tempo Storm. Uh, he really helped prepare the tech of the deck. I remember Eloise really yelled at me for putting two Blessing of Kings in the deck because she felt like um, it's better to play the Roulette of Fours, which is like one True Silver, one Kings, right. one Consecration. Uh, and, and I was talking to Saiyan a lot, and Saiyan was like, no, based off your lineup, like, this will be really good. And I mean, there's more to the lineup in general, but like he helped tweak so many of these small holes that I didn't think were there because I gave him my deck list. I'm like, this is what I want to play, and he was like, this is what you need to do. And I, I think Justin is like god tier Amazing. analyst and coach, yeah. and, and he's yeah. a really good player too. But when it comes to like preparation and stuff, there's almost no one as good as him. So I want to really give a big shout out to him. He, he helped me a lot. I, absolutely, I can attest to that. He's one, actually one of the players, even though he's playing for Tempo Store, it's one of the players that Team Arkan has like a big respect for. Right. Yeah, I know just saying, it's probably one of the players that I was surprised didn't have a team until uh, you guys picked him up, which I thought was 
Uh, really good news. That being said, congratulations on yeah. uh, wrecking the European Championship. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to put this, but uh, no, really man. showed him good. What yeah. happened to the legitimacy of Hearthstone? Uh, <laughs> this, this is not good. Uh, right. Uh, we were not questioning supposed to be what happened. Right, but, I mean, it has happened, right? Once in a while. Yeah, yeah eventually. Like, People no one has a 0% right? win rate in Hearthstone ever, right? So yeah. Even uh, even my I think, wife. I think now is 16% game. of the <laughs> <laughs> on my stream. Oh, so, like, I was counting. Better than me, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh, well, guys, I, I can't uh, I can't exactly come back on the couch just yet. I have to. Oh, no, we it's want fun. to see we want to see you play more. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I think I think Tice also just came off of BlizzCon, so he said he didn't have much time to prepare. So he kind of just played decks that. Um, he, he he told me he didn't prepare much. So yeah. based off that, I kind of pinned him on certain decks that I can get away with, and that really helped me formulate a strategy too. So I think again, if the if the situation was different, we had a lot of time to prepare. We had time to play like League of Explorers more. He just he would own my butt so bad. So yeah. uh, well, well, maybe I, I think uh, this is a very good uh, circumstance for me to win. Because you're going to the playoffs if you end up like securing one of the top no, spots. Don't, don't remind no, no, me, no, man. No, no. <laughs> this you, you might, over. I only yeah. play the show match. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you might go there like if it happens. And if Tice makes it, then you're going to be facing off against him. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, But I think Tice will still make it through the group. I think he's still the yeah. strongest player. Um, no disrespect to Sho or JJ, but I think Tice still will be a, uh, something to be feared. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll be... Uh, Waiting for the next match, and you're not gonna be in it. No, I'm gonna be making sure to watch the series very closely because yeah. uh, there's actually a chance. There's actually a chance to go to the round 16. This is absurd. Yeah, this it's really absurd. amazing. I think that yeah. a lot of people, a lot of the people on Twitch would really like to see you go through and yeah. win the entire and thing. Not our. Oh, it's crazy. Man. <laughs> with well, secret ballot, we won one series, we're not winning all the, all the way. Let's just start all with right. top 16, all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. one step well, at a time. One milestone at a time. Yeah. All right, so uh, we've taken a short break before the next match, guys. Thanks, uh, you know, thanks for watching the match. We'll be back in about uh, five minutes for us to set up. Maybe get somebody else on the casting uh, desk if they want to. Well, casting couch, if they want to. So we'll be right back, guys.